thinking of uh, increased body weight as having an effect on mental disorders. So there is evidence to indicate that there are associations between obesity or overweight and the development of specific psychiatric disorders, among them prominently depression and anxiety disorders. First of all, uh, please realize that many or a substantial subgroup of your patients with mental disorders are also obese and have, as a consequence, uh, potentially also other disorders related to obesity. I think that's very crucial and that you're not only talking about a psychiatric uh, phenotype, but you're talking about a psychiatric phenotype uh, associated with different somatic uh, uh, disorders. And that makes it more complex, and uh, you need to take that into consideration. Well, overweight or, and obesity, actually obesity particularly, is uh, inversely associated with uh, suicide. So there's uh, quite a substantial uh, data indicating that indeed the more obese you are the less likely you are to commit suicide. Not all studies have shown this but most studies do show that and this is quite a substantial uh, relationship but nevertheless you're right in pointing out that we do not have very uh, many ready answers to what to do about these associations. As a clinician I would say it's important to realize the problem and also to if you see a very uh, or rather obese individual or have an obese kid uh, make sure that they are also uh, seen by a pediatrician, know whether or not they are on their way to developing uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, and ha if they have hypertension, just to name two uh, critical uh, topics, uh, do your work and, and have these kids checked up. Well, obviously, as soon as you uh, see, visually see that this uh, individual is obese, then you know that uh, indeed this person has a high BMI, but you can use BMI centile curves if you're not sure of whether or not this uh, individual has a uh, too high body weight. And commonly we use the, uh, for instance, the 90th centile, at least in Germany, uh, to then uh, diagnose uh, overweight uh, children. And the, we use the 97th centile to, you, to define obesity. But th there's differences in different countries related to this, and obviously it, you can't, as in adults, have a single clear-cut criterion. In adults, it's BMI above 25 is overweight, and BMI above 30 is obese, uh, entails obesity. But uh, in children and adolescents, due to growth, this is not as easy to pinpoint. Particularly if, you're, if you or your children have a lower socioeconomic background, uh, then you're bound to have an overlap of your mental disorders with uh, obesity. We know basically that this, this is an emerging field and we need many more studies to really uh, be sure about what we're talking about. But uh, there is evidence to indicate that you potentially might actually uh, improve depression by, uh, for instance, changing your diet. There's, I wouldn't call it clear-cut evidence, but there, obviously a better diet will entail a better somatic health, and, and it could be that via that mechanism you could also influence, uh, for instance, uh, depression or other mental disorders. But we don't have very hardcore evidence at the moment. The major problem in this area is that we, uh, if you look at studies uh, tr uh, of obese kids, I mean, m many have been sent to weight loss programs, and the results in this case are very clear cut. They, they do lose weight, but the weight loss is only minimal. So even if you tell obese kids to go on a diet, uh, actually to re reduce body weight, that really does not work very well. It works to, to, to a minute extent, but not in, in a larger perspective. And that certainly obese kids don't become normal weight kids after they go uh, on a diet. And, and particularly, they're not able to maintain, even if they do lose weight, they're not able to maintain that body weight for a longer period of time. So that already indicates that it's not that easy uh, interfering with diets. You can't superimpose a, a diet on, on a family or a kid. This is something very difficult to do, but uh, it probably works a lot better with more educated families. You could maybe make a stronger case, and you'd, adherence to this would probably be stronger. But if you're talking about people from with, uh, from, with a lower socioeconomic background, 
both parents working heavily and stuff like that, then it's going to be rather difficult to ask them to change their diet. So ambitions should be adjusted to the social economic background? Definitely, yes. You, you have to be careful of what kind of advice you're sending to whom. Okay. If you look at omega-3, you can see that there is seemingly, for instance, if you take countries that have a high intake of omega-3, look at the depression rates in these countries and, and uh, look at uh, countries that have low omega-3, low, for instance, low fish intake, uh, then you see that there is a relationship between uh, rates of depression, uh, in uh, quite a strong relationship, but it's unknown if this is really due to, uh, for instance, the diet or the, this particular nutrient. There may be other nutrients in fish related to to the, or that also explain this relationship and the relationship may, might not be true to begin with. So we need lots more studies to really uh, uh, make this a, a clear-cut story. Uh, a Mediterranean type diet I think would not make you happy within a matter of a day but uh, if, if there is uh, an effect I, I would assume it would take you several months to actually benefit from uh, yeah, the adherence to such a diet. It might be quicker if you're also losing weight, but as a, again, as I said, losing weight is, uh, you, you don't usually continue to maintain that weight that you have achieved during weight loss uh, in the longer term because somehow you, the human beings tend to relapse and, and so weight goes back up. Uh, so you have to disentangle the effect of, of weight loss and the diet, and that's not as trivial. As I said, there's this link between somatic and mental disorders. Mm -hmm. And overall, a very crucial issue or a factor that might underlie this association is the diet. Uh, knowing, knowing from work done in uh, obesity, that changing a diet is not an easy thing. So we need to come up with uh, clever solutions uh, to first of all get the evidence straight and sef second to then think of how we can influence the diets of kids. Well th there are obvious ways to do this and for instance you could change school diets or, or school meals, uh, make them more Mediterranean type uh, meals. Uh, this would be rather easy, easy to do but obviously entails higher costs so it has uh, uh, it's again not other reasons for not making it that easy to do. There's not a lot of risk in experimenting with it. No, I wouldn't say there's any uh, because Mediterranean type diet is not going to hurt you. The change in uh, treatment in five years is hard to predict. <laughs> the future is always hard to predict. But I'm pretty convinced that we will be looking at adjunctive uh, therapies uh, for the treatment of uh, mentally ill children and adolescents. That we have the two main pillars, uh, psychotherapy, we have uh, psychopharmacology, but we are now, I think uh, we need to actually uh, look for other pillars, other uh, ways to help these ch children. Two major directions would be uh, would be physical activity. I think it's very crucially important and much neglected both in the clinical world but also outside of the clinical world and uh, diet. Both are, I think, could be two additional pillars that we should be looking at and should be assessing and, and perhaps uh, even treating patients with based on information we gather from research. Well, it would obviously entail working together with uh, uh, people involved in physical education who know how to motivate kids to uh, to do more sports, but it also has to do with uh, preventive type of work related to uh, city building, so you need to have more facilities or more opportunities for children to be able to move around in the first place, which obviously has been vastly neglected in many cities. Uh, and you could also think of, uh, of diet... Uh, uh, interventions, but again, the more I think, the more we uh, remove the individual from this, and the more we think of doing this in a in a structural manner, for by, for instance, buildings, uh, apartments, or houses, or, or cities, in a way that um, provide kids with an opportunity to move, that this is the better way to go, instead of telling them to move more. Mm -hmm. If you tell me to move more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the results <laughs> um, are not long-lasting, usually. Mm -hmm.